Now one of the things that you're going to need to understand and be prepared to answer questions on on this exam is Active Directory replication. And the idea of Active Directory sharing all this data amongst multiple domain controllers is an interesting one. It adds stability to the network and actually makes it more stable the larger it gets. But the idea of keeping all that data together and keeping it all converged or identical across multiple domain controllers can create some issues. And I, and I want to just kind of go through this animation here. And you'll need to watch this a few times because there's a lot of information here that will actually help you answer these questions. And the more you can understand about this in, in this version, I think it'll help you answer the questions. Now we'll do some text-based stuff a little bit later in a different video. But for now, we have got a domain controller in a domain. It has, as a result of being a domain controller, the Active Directory database. Now this Active Directory database is going to be shared by other domain controllers. These are each domain controllers in the same domain. And they have Active Directory on them as well. We just don't have the little image of the disks here, okay? But these are domain controllers. Active Directory, first of all, is divided up into really three partitions and possibly four. And what they've done, way back in the early days of Active Directory, and we're talking around the year 2000, Active Directory replication began to be problematic for a lot of reasons, and there's a lot of stuff going on. And so Active Directory, the architecture of it, Microsoft realized they needed to split some of this so they can control Active Directory's replication kind of in separate sections. And so you have really three main partitions or sections of the database that get replicated individually or separately from each other. And then you have one that's optional. But the main one, or the first one, I should say, is the domain partition. And you also hear this called the domain naming context. This contains all the objects in the domain, all your users, groups, computers, group policy containers, and so forth. The domain partition is automatically replicated to all the other domain controllers in the domain. The next one is the configuration partition. Now this has all the objects that represent the logical structure of the forest. It keeps up with the number of domains that is there, also the physical topology, all the sites, subnets, and services. So this is what keeps up with how many domains we've got, who's in them, and so forth. And that information, that partition, gets replicated to all the other servers in the domain. Then we have the schema partition. And this defines the object classes and their attributes for the entire library. So anytime we change an object and we add an attribute to a user object, is changed to the schema partition, and that too gets replicated to all the other domain controllers. Now, if we have installed the application directory partition, this is what gets changed when Active Directory Aware software gets installed. Exchange products, storing DNS, integrating it into Active Directory. That information gets stored in the Active Directory application directory partition, and that one, we can choose where to replicate that. So it doesn't automatically go to all domain controllers, and we can work with that and choose which domain controllers we want to send it to. Now, what if there's another domain in the forest? Well, in that case, the configuration partition and the schema partition also gets replicated to all the other domain controllers in the forest. Because for the configuration, remember, this is everything that keeps up with the topology, all of your domains and sites and so forth. And then the schema keeps up with all the user objects, and so everybody needs to know about that stuff. This is all great, except, as you can see here, there's a lot of replication, or there's a lot of stuff, for lack of a better term, moving through the network. Now, this can become problematic for you. Let's say if there is like a slow link between this server and these servers. So what we can do in that instance is we can control replication by putting these servers in different sites. And so let's take a look at what that looks like. Now we're going to go back and build pretty much the same type situation. We've got an Active Directory domain controller on a server, and we have our four partitions just like before. But now we put that server into a site. Now by default it was installed, it joined the default first site, and everybody goes into that. But once we go in and separate it, and we have to go out there and create subnets and so forth, 
Now we can create two separate sites, and we still have our computers in those sites, but replication is never going to take place between these two sites until we go out there and create what's called a site connector between them, and then we can control replication. There's a lot of ways we can control it. But the idea here is, is that if we want to control replication in Active Directory, we're going to have to use sites. Now, again, let me say something about this whole idea of sites and domains. The Microsoft recommendation for the simplest installation of Active Directory is going to be a single domain and a single site. You want to use sites when you're trying to segregate traffic, gather or, or limit traffic around a certain number of servers or users, or when you have slow links between two parts of your network. And again, keep in mind, sites can traverse domains, all kind of stuff. So you may want to watch this a few times, and if you can get that in your head about how Active Directory replication is taking place, understand these four different partitions, understand that the domain configuration and schema get copied to everybody in the same domain, configuration and schema get copied out to domain controllers even in other domains. Watch this a few times, kind of get this in your brain, and it will help you figure out some things and watch for some confusing situations on the exam.